Due to the graphic nature of this program, viewer discretion is advised. And this is live on the power cam. Let's go, man. This guy is crazy. Get off the ground! 10-0, 10-0. From around the world. And across the country. He's in the world. From your own backyard. This is the reality of law enforcement today. Look at that. For the next 60 minutes, look out, look out. you'll be a witness. Shut your truck off. You'll see everything an officer sees. The fastest pursuits, the scariest shootouts, the most extreme and unusual crimes I need some help. ever captured on video. Police and news gathering agencies around the world have sent us this footage because they want you to see for yourself the insanity of criminal behavior. Because only when you've seen how it happens and why it happens can you make sure it doesn't happen to you. I'm Sheriff John Bennell. High-speed pursuits are incredibly dangerous to everybody. One mistake at 100 miles an hour can be deadly. That's why officers use every trick in the book to track bad guys down and bring them in. So get ready. Tonight, you're going to see the world's most dangerous chases. Kalispell, Montana. A deputy is trying to pull over this SUV towing a boat. Stop the vehicle right there. But this isn't a typical traffic stop. Stop the vehicle right there. The driver is a wanted rapist. Pursuit. And he's not about to give up easily. Person 3, 39. We're in pursuit, heading uh, southbound. Set that one. The frantic suspect blows red lights and stop signs. With the boat trailer in tow, his truck lacks maneuverability. But he makes up for it with sheer size. Northbound in front of the high school. It's going to be tough to stop this monster. Watch him. Coming up on fifth. An oncoming backup unit tries to intimidate the man, but he swerves right around it. 10 unit copy. Seconds later, another patrol car appears. The city streets give the suspect little room to maneuver his truck, so he takes it to the highway. Main and East Washington. The suspect rumbles down the divided four-lane road. Officers want to get ahead of him to drop spikes. Okay, here we go. One deputy rushes up the opposing lanes. It's like threading a needle at 60 miles an hour. As soon as the deputy pulls ahead, he swerves through the next gap in the divider, cutting the suspect off. But what the suspect does next is unbelievable. He barrels right into the opposing lanes of traffic. We're in the southbound lane of 93, heading north. The officer looks for a way to warn approaching vehicles, but the suspect blocks his path. The man drives like he's welcoming oncoming traffic. Suddenly, the persistent deputy gets a blunt warning. Shot fired. Shot fired at my vehicle, this bad. The stunned officer falls back. Another deputy moves in to dog the truck on its blind side, where he's shielded from gunfire. Shot fired, trying to get you. The suspect seems like he'd do anything to not get caught. The officer will never forget what happens next. The truck jerks violently back and forth without any interference from the deputy. It glides in a slow, arcing path toward the edge of the road. We're going out from the ditch. We're going in. Oh, right now. The truck hits the light post dead on sending pieces of the cab, trailer, and boat flying in all directions. The stunned officers converge on the crash site, weapons drawn. But the man is not a threat. Send an ambulance to 900 West Reserve. This rapist didn't want to face a trial. Shot fired. So when deputies left him with nowhere to run, he became his own judge and jury. 
This is usually where a chase ends. But for some, this is where it starts heating up. Even before their cars come to a stop, many criminals will start running on foot. It's not the safest way. It's not the smartest way. But in their minds, it's the only way. In Bismarck, North Dakota, an officer struggles for control of a chase only a few minutes old. The suspect already has one advantage. He's concealed by a thick cloud of exhaust. Suddenly, the man tears through a small lot, stirring up a tornado of dust and debris. The officer positions himself as the car rolls back onto the road and into a pole. When he reaches the driver's seat, he gets an unwelcome surprise. The suspect is gone. Somewhere hidden in the smoke screen, the suspect bailed out and ran. But for everyone that gets away, there are hundreds who don't. Village, Oklahoma. Police have been closely following the stolen car throughout town. Apparently, the suspects inside believe officers will continue pursuing the vehicle while they take off running. They ditch the car. Leaving their car and their partners to roll into traffic, they make a mad dash for freedom. Get your car. But it doesn't take long for officers to track them down. People over at the uh, Burger King pointed these two out. Trying to escape from police is never a good idea. But to think this is the way to do it is not only foolish, it's downright dangerous. Get down on the ground right now! Goldsboro, North Carolina. The driver of this car is reckless and running scared. Without thinking of the consequences, he swerves into oncoming lanes. He speeds ahead, completely oblivious to stop signs. To make matters worse, his left front tire is gone, leaving small flames in its place. If he continues driving like this, his vehicle could drive him right into an early grave. But he has no intention of staying in his car. The suspect is nearly crushed between his door and the police cruiser. Despite his brush with death, he continues running. But this officer stays right on him every step of the way. The suspect is lucky to be alive. He risked it all and still got nowhere. Remember this guy? He may have momentarily duped the officer, but look closely. With backup units in the vicinity, he didn't get far. They rarely do. The quickest way to get hurt is to do something dumb. And you can't get much dumber than jumping out of a moving car. The only thing more stupid is running from police in the first place. When you see emergency lights, it doesn't mean there's an interesting show up ahead. It means there's danger right here, right now. And it's not always what you expect. Late in Utah, Officer Lloyd Davis has pulled over to assist the person in this car. The driver has been injured in a minor accident. Most cars and trucks don't slow down at all. But they do look over at the flashing lights on the side of the road. And a little innocent rubbernecking is about to turn a simple roadside assist into a nightmare. The ambulance arrives. Now there are two sets of flashing lights. An SUV slows down. The car behind doesn't see him. Now that car is stopped dead on the freeway with no emergency blinkers. And a quarter mile down the highway, a semi is coming, full speed ahead, in the same lane. And he's not looking at the road. He's looking over at the flashing lights. This is a perfect setup for disaster. The simple rule is, if you see emergency lights, get alert real quick. 
there's danger in front of you and behind you from people going too fast and people going too slow. When people see flashing lights, they're likely to do anything for any reason. So get alert, real fast, and save your life. Coming up on World's Wildest Police Videos, Full Contact. Whether it's a sporty import, he's running, or a van on the lamp, we are on top of the When metal hits metal, something's got to give. Suicidal drivers don't care if they live or die, but police do. Their job is to protect and serve, a vow they take seriously. Brisbane, Australia. A distressed driver is coming apart at the seams. Earlier, a concerned family member informed police that this man was on the road and was extremely unstable. Officers pursue him cautiously. Before long, the officers discover exactly how dire the situation is. In a horrifying display, the man pours gasoline on himself. With their tanks full of gas, the officers realize they're also potential targets. But they take the risk and stay close to the man. Constable Rob Pigeon moves in behind the driver. A dangerous position. Then officers see something truly chilling. The driver is one spark away from certain disaster. He stops the car. It's his last chance to save himself. But in the blink of an eye, the driver and the car burst into flames. Officers and emergency workers swarm in and beat down the flame. Every second counts. Constable Pigeon pulls the driver from the burning car. His adrenaline pumping, the officer doesn't realize that he's already badly burned. A fire extinguisher smothers the blaze. Miraculously, the driver survives. The officers know that they could have easily been victims in this man's suicide mission. The, the, uh, the, the car's well involved and we're all standing right beside it and it, it could have very well gone up and taken all of us with it. When this guy hit the road, he didn't care about anyone's life, not even his own. Well, now he's definitely uh, petrol, I mean. And though police are trained for volatile situations, this one was extreme. Constable Pigeon was awarded the department's Medal of Valor for his heroic rescue, but he sees his role as part of the job. I'd like to think that any general duties police officer in the state would do exactly what I did. Though the driver set them up for a front row seat at his own suicide, the brave officers made sure the final curtain didn't fall. Every country deals with crime in its own way. When the product of foreign crime is exported into America, it becomes an international problem. In the global marketplace, Russian vodka is a lucrative commodity. So why are these Moscow police officers pouring it out by the gallon? It's counterfeit, poisonous low quality liquor with high price labels. The officers put some heat on the cellar and they learn there's plenty more where this came from. They call in Spetsnaz, Russia's special SWAT team that handles these kinds of crime rings. Acting on a hot tip, a commando team raids a supposedly abandoned hotel but the building is far from empty. They find the place full of families. All workers in the counterfeit vodka ring. They also discover more bogus booze. Having robbed the crime ring of its labor force, the Spetsnaz now goes after their transportation. Police intercept a truck full of the poisonous vodka and take down the driver hard. It may seem brutal, but in Russia, this is how things are done. The officers also find a police scanner on the man, 
they realize they'll have to operate under radio silence for the rest of this mission. Applying their own brand of pressure, they get what they want, information. It isn't long before the driver cracks, telling them where the liquor is made and stored. In the morning, the Spetsnaz launches an all-out raid. One team breaks off and heads for a decrepit barn finding the rusty, unsanitary tanks where the toxic vodka was made. Meanwhile, the rest of the police commandos round up the remaining workers and confiscate thousands of liters of the counterfeit vodka. They now have everything they need, except the bosses. Later that day, a surveillance team spots the counterfeiting kingpins, and the Spetsnaz rushes to the scene. These crime bosses have no idea what's coming. until it's too late. With their operation totally dismantled, these criminals are taken into custody. This 100-proof fraud ring could have crippled a major Russian industry and flooded the world market with unsafe Moscow moonshine. But thanks to the quick and total response of the Spetsnaz, the men responsible for this global flood of illegal vodka were exported to Siberia. Baldwin, Georgia. An officer stops a driver for a minor tag violation. But when he approaches the car, he gets more than he bargained for. But I want your name because I'm gonna call attorney Monday. It's the driver's wife, and she's not making this officer's job any easier. Ma'am, yes, I do refuse to answer you under these circumstances. Policemen are to protect and serve. You're not serving me. The officer tries to do his job, but he can't get a word in edgewise. Sir, you get that thing. Hoping to defuse the situation, the officer has the man step out of the car. Maybe here, they can get some peace and quiet. I have every right to ask the question. Sarah. Or maybe not. You will give us another ticket. Do I just let her die? Ma'am, have a seat. Fed up with the woman's behavior, he asked to see her driver's license. Figuring the man has suffered enough, the officer lets him off with a warning. I'm not writing you a ticket. I wrote you a written warning on it. You've been very cooperative. I'm not going to make you pay for her mouth, OK? Thank you. The woman is not so lucky. But I am writing her citation for disorderly conduct. I don't have to put up with that. The driver tries to get his wife off the hook. I apologize. Please don't. I'm, okay. I'm going to pay for it. I'm going to live. But every time he takes a step forward, she drags him two steps back. Oh, so I can drop the chief if it's an emergency. No. Have a seat or you're going to jail. Plain and simple. Finally, the officer has had enough. Okay, you can have a seat back in the car. He gives the woman the ticket. This is a citation for disorderly conduct, for being loud and boisterous. I'm asking you a question. Okay, there's certain ways you can do that, and that's the wrong way. When the woman continues to torment the officer, the husband puts her in her place once and for all. This driver avoided a hefty fine when a courteous officer cut him a break. You've been very cooperative. I'm not writing you a ticket. Unfortunately, the officer can't save him from all his problems. Still to come on World's Wildest Police Videos. This is one of the most dangerous pursuits we have ever seen. Burning questions. Can a security officer guard his own life? Can a night vision villain take a hard hit? Can a Carolina cop he's running, he's running. push a punk off the streets? All the answers Why were you the gun? are coming up next. Security guards have to deal with so-called non-violent crime all the time. But the fact is, if you go against criminals, you're in danger. Fort Lauderdale, Florida. Two women walk into a department store during a sale. Unfortunately, these ladies aren't bargain hunters. They're shoplifters looking for a five-finger discount. Pretending to browse, they case the store. And when they find a hidden corner, one woman stuffs merchandise under her dress. 
They have no idea they've been caught on tape. A surveillance camera in the parking lot records the store's security manager stopping the shoplifters. He's very careful not to take this lightly. He knows what can happen. Months earlier at another store in the same chain, a security officer confronted two thieves. Without warning, one of the suspects drew a gun and wounded the guard. The injured man survived, and the shooter was caught in another state. But the incident served as a grim wake-up call for all security officers. For this reason, the security manager cautiously confronts one of the shoplifting women. His instincts are correct. When he tries to detain the suspect, she lashes out with a razor blade. Blocking the attack, the security man's hand is cut wide open. But that's nothing compared to what happens next. The suspects drive off in a car, and the officer can't get out of the way. With no other option, he holds on to the hood for dear life. As the car finally races out of the parking lot, the security manager is thrown off the hood behind this tree. Thankfully, he only has minor injuries, and the driver of the car is arrested hours later when she brazenly returns to the same store. Some people think being a security officer is easy, but when small crimes go wrong, the job can turn dangerous and even deadly. When a chase happens at night, it's important to keep the suspect in view. And no one can see a chase at night the way a helicopter can. Bay County, Florida. The police chopper's infrared camera hones in on a suspected DUI. 408 we are on top of the chase. The pilot soon makes a startling discovery. The car is driving backwards. The white hot engine faces the trail of police cars. The fearless driver charges tail first across a five lane road. If you can push that vehicle safely off towards the side of the road, we can get him stopped. A ground unit moves in for the pit maneuver. But a pit maneuver isn't designed to work on the steering end of a car. The suspect pulls free and accelerates. We're back eastbound. Finally, one officer gets a clear shot. He plows the car sideways, spinning it to a stop. Other units converge. As one officer aims his gun at the car's tires, the others swarm the doors, trying to get inside the car. But this driver will have none of that. They just took off from him again. When an officer billy clubs a window, the suspect peels out. Forward this time. They shoot at the rear wheel. We had one at the, car. the bullet finds its mark. Within seconds, the driver is fishtailing on a bare rim. Now the suspect should be easy to corral. But police are about to learn just how slippery this driver can be. The suspect swerves into a driveway. Units rush in to block the exit. But before they can surround the vehicle, the driver jams it back into reverse and dodges their barricade. Officers are left with one question. Who is this guy? Okay, they're uh, now just across 15th Street. Police follow in his wake as two more tires fall apart. Now is their chance. They move in for the knockout punch. You can push him off the side of the road. The first hit spins him 180 degrees. The driver calmly puts the car in drive and keeps right on going. The second hit sends him skidding off the road and careening over a stop sign. It barely slows him down. Finally, the third hits the charm. The car side plows into a stand of trees. Cruisers box him in before he can run again. When officers move in for the takedown, they're shocked to find a woman who only ran because her license was suspended. But despite her impressive maneuvering and her stunt driver high-speed backsliding, it's doubtful she'll get that license back anytime soon. Next, on World's Wildest Police Videos.
the wrong place. Be careful, they're driving crazy. At the wrong time. Undercover cops. Don't move. Get caught unaware. A 300 CX. 1020, got one running. Gets caught from behind. And when things get hot, all you can catch are bad breaks. Ow! Due to the graphic nature of this program, viewer discretion is advised. Bullets and cars. A dangerous duel. One weighs less than an ounce. The other is more than a ton. Contact has been made. But when either hits high speed, watch out. Fencing operations, where criminals trade stolen goods for cold, hard cash. But sometimes the police set up their own fencing operations in order to arrest thieves who bring in stolen merchandise. Knoxville, Tennessee. These two men are undercover officers. Their sting operation has just gone horribly wrong. Right now, they're unarmed and being held at gunpoint. Moments ago, they set up surveillance cameras throughout this repair shop. The shop recently housed a fencing operation. The undercover officers were going to use the location to spend the day busting low-level crooks. Don't you move. Okay. Don't you move. But instead, they're facing the last thing they ever expected, a pair of armed robbers, one of them holding a Mac 11 machine gun. The two gunmen heard about the fencing operation and thought there'd be a lot of cash lying around. But the only cash they're going to find is what's in their hostages' wallets. Backup units are stationed right outside, but they can't bust in because the unarmed officers would be caught in the crossfire. All the surveillance team can do is watch as this horrifying event unfolds on their screens. While one robber keeps his gun trained on the undercover officers, surveillance cameras capture the other casing the shop, locking the back door and looking for a safe. But he doesn't find one, so he returns to ransack the office. The gunmen are growing angry. One of the undercover officers tries to let them down easy. It's just a TV shop. <laughs> yeah, they got the word on the street, y'all got a thousand. It's all we got. When the robbers realize there's no more cash on the premises, things go from bad to worse. The frustrated gunmen shift their attention to their victims. While their hands are being bound, the undercover officers become sick with dread. They know all too well that this is the first step of an execution-style killing. I probably got more money than y'all, do Probably. Just kidding. And we're just trying to make a few bucks, man. That's it, you know? Once both undercover officers are tied up, yeah, the gunmen let them know just how oh, disappointed man. they are with their plunder. I can't believe it. They act like they're just going to leave. Yeah, I think it is. All right. They walk out of the room and shut the door. But just as the undercover officers breathe a sigh of relief, The gunmen fire two shots through the door. The bullets barely miss the officers who dive for cover. Outside, the robbers are immediately apprehended. Meanwhile, the two undercover officers check each other for wounds. It was a close call, and they're very shaken up. They both know they came within inches of losing their lives. It was a routine sting operation that turned into a nightmare. And these two officers got a terrifying reminder of just how dangerous undercover police work can be. In Spartanburg, South Carolina, a 300 ZX cuts off a cruiser. But this isn't the first officer he's almost hit. This driver's just run a sobriety checkpoint, nearly mowing down a deputy. We're unable to stop. They're still hitting. 
The suspect thunders down an off-ramp, blows a stop sign, and hits a dirt road. He's running from me. Police are determined to derail this Dotson. They know anyone wild enough to run down a cop is a threat to everyone. Equipped with push bars, the cruiser bumps the suspect from behind. Contact has been made between vehicles. It's a technique police use to stop reckless drivers. At these speeds, even a mild tap can send a car into a tailspin. Even though this maneuver puts him in extreme danger, the deputy tries again. Incredibly, this hot rod holds the road, but the officer refuses to give up. The third time's the charm. The sports car spins out of control. The cruiser blocks the passenger door, and the deputy jumps out. He has only one thing to say to this driver. You're crazy! He's also under arrest. Police will do anything to stop a dangerous criminal. And if at first they don't succeed, He's running from me. they'll try, try, again. Still to come. Put your arms out to your side. On world's wildest police videos. Felonies from around the world. A stolen town car. Is a determined felon. With a southern twist. A hostage crisis. Moscow style. And the Indianapolis Speedway. Uh -oh. Takes to the street. Next. Moscow, Russia. A hardline terrorist turns a carefree sightseeing tour into a tense standoff. The ruthless man holds dozens of South Korean tourists hostage. Armed with a live hand grenade, this guy means business. Moscow's mayor and two South Korean officials keep close tabs on the situation. But this is far beyond a politician's expertise. I have no idea how it's happening. The Moscow police anti-terrorist team is called in. Known as Group Alpha, they're the most elite unit in the country. While their colleagues gather phony American bills for the $2 million ransom, Group Alpha prepares for their mission with a unique strategy. They get an identical bus. It's a practice vehicle for the real rescue. Tucked under the bridge, the officers are barely out of sight of the violent terrorist. The negotiator stalls for more time. He talks the ransom down to $1 million and agrees to bring provisions to the bus. Finally, Group Alpha is ready for action. With a team of officers silently following, the negotiator and another officer approach with food and a smoke bomb. The units race in. One team sweeps to the front and swarms the terrorist. Another wave rushes in to rescue the hostages. The officers smash out the windows and dive into the bus. They pull the hostages to safety as the struggle with the terrorist rages at the front of the bus. 37 heart-stopping seconds later, the perfectly choreographed rescue is over. The hostages are visibly shaken. This was not the leisure tour they signed up for. But for Group Alpha, it was a surgical strike. Every hostage escapes alive, and the terrorist criminal career is over. When the Moscow police encountered a unique hostage situation, they solved it with unique training. After 17 tense hours, it all came down to a few seconds. And Group Alpha worked those few seconds to perfection. Carroll County, Georgia. Police pursue a suspect in a stolen luxury car. The man has been enjoying his classy ride for several days. Even with its bumper dragging, he's so desperate to keep it that moments earlier he tried to run down a policeman. As a suspect approached, he uh, went around the sticks, had an officer in the median, and we call a safe zone, and the uh, suspect uh, tried to run over him in the median. It would be easy to make this personal, but instead of getting too aggressive, officers wait for the frenzied man to make his own mistake. It doesn't take long for their patience to pay off. He's wrecked, he's wrecked. 
When the driver saw other units ahead, he panicked and veered headlong into the one thing he should have avoided. A telephone pole. Officers immediately swarm the vehicle. But the man is in no shape to put up a fight. It turns out he's been intoxicated for the entire chase. The humbled suspect is taken into custody. But he pauses for one final glance at his short-lived possession, now just sitting there in ruins. Thanks to his thieving hands and his drunken rampage. Bernie, Texas. Two officers pull over a possible DUI. The driver turns out to be an older man. People worried about your driving. We had a report that you may have had a little bit too much to drink tonight. The subject thinks he's driving fine, but he admits to having a few cans of brew. Have you had anything to drink tonight? Three beers. Three beers? Yeah. Okay. While his partner watches his back, the lead officer checks the truck. What he finds makes it clear that the man was not done drinking for the night. Two cold beers in the front seat. We have one open beer. At this point, the policeman has every reason to suspect him of driving while intoxicated. Step over here for a second, Mr. The officers put the subject through several field sobriety tests. Close your eyes, sir. I want you to walk. Nine steps, heel to toe. Not surprisingly, the man has trouble with several of the simple tasks. Okay. Put your arms out to your side again like you had them. Despite the difficulties, he keeps cooperating. Although he gets a little grumpy. The officers have seen enough. They place the subject under arrest. Okay, I think you're too intoxicated to drive, okay? You're under arrest for the offensive driving while intoxicated, okay? The man takes the news calmly, and he doesn't struggle as he's cuffed. It seems like a textbook DUI stop of a suspect who appears harmless. But all that changes when the second officer asks a standard question. Is there any weapons in your vehicle? No, there's one behind my belt. Suddenly, this DUI takes on a frightening edge. The officers carefully frisk the man, and there it is. A loaded semi-automatic handgun. What kind of gun is it? It's a brown 9mm high power. The policemen find another full ammo clip and the man's attitude becomes less easygoing. I want it back. It's a chilling revelation. They had no idea they were dealing with an armed suspect who clearly has a dark side. Why were you carrying the gun? People don't like me. Being unpopular is no excuse. He's booked on carrying a concealed weapon as well as DUI. You can have the rest of your beer as soon as you get out of jail. This man had several drinks in him Three beers. and a loaded weapon on him. Is there any weapons in your vehicle? No, there's one behind my belt. If he was a hazard behind the wheel, he would have been twice as dangerous behind the trigger of a gun. Why were you carrying the gun? People don't like me. Either way, by taking him off the streets, these officers may have saved several lives. Next, on World's Wildest Police Video, off the track at Indianapolis. Left front tire does not exist on his car. Sparky and Speedy. This has been going on for some time. Slipping and slamming. Setting the night on fire. Go. Uh -oh. Indianapolis, Indiana. It's the dead of winter, but this morning the streets are blazing hot. Well, we're following a chase. This has been going on for some time. Police pursue an abusive man who has just threatened his ex-girlfriend's life. The uh, driver of the van, we're told by dispatchers, is wanted on a restraining order. Spike strips have already torn the rubber away from one of his wheels. The uh, left front tire does not exist on his car anymore. Bare rims cut into the pavement, leaving a fiery trail of sparks in the van's wake. 
Officers keep a safe distance while still closely monitoring the suspect's every move. Suddenly, the reckless man roars onto the main roads. He shoots through one intersection, after another, after another. Innocent motorists scramble to get out of the way. So do people on foot. Police have to do something, but if they use force now, more lives could be at risk. Everybody use caution. So they strategically place themselves throughout the city. The plan appears to be working, but then... He just hit the, the back of a yeah, truck. It looked like he bumped somebody. The out-of-control man slams into the pickup, forcing him off the road then continues driving as if nothing has happened. It's really amazing that more people haven't been hit as fast as this guy's been going. He accelerates even harder, playing a deadly game of King of the Road. Police now fear the raging man may be trying to get to his ex-girlfriend's house. They have to stop him, but up ahead, a disaster in the making. He makes an unexpected left turn, heading directly into an occupied school zone. Sheriff's deputies race to stop the suspect, but are kept at bay by the van's flaming tail. I'm staying back a little way from this. The man charges ahead, gaining momentum and burning up the road with every passing second. Right now, he's on a collision course with a caravan of school buses. No, he's just running right through. Tragedy is avoided this time, but his luck can't hold out forever. He tries to turn onto a side street, but the battered wheel rim makes it impossible. Police immediately box the man in. They tear the suspect out of the van and wrestle him to the ground. After a brief struggle, officers have him in custody. For the man who didn't know when to stay away. Wanted on a restraining order. Who didn't know when to slow down. And who ultimately didn't know when to stop. His rampage has finally led to restraint behind bars. And he's done. Stop the vehicle right there. Go shoot. Danger is no friend to police. No, no! It's not a game. Put your hands up! It's not a toy. It's not a good time. Officers don't go looking for danger. 1020, he's running. But they don't ignore it either. So every day, every ship, every chase, police face the danger. You're crazy. But they can never, ever, oh, right now, back down. Yeah. <laughs>